Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Welcome to another episode of Let's Jaliawala. Let's is leadership, enterprise, technology. I get you to meet people, the amazing people I've come across in this country while going around as a trainer and as a social entrepreneur. These are the people who inspired me around these three words. I continue serving my my time in these domains. I am very, very privileged to have somebody who has been a star, who has been very, very accessible, and, and somebody who brings a, a very different energy to every room, every conversation that we've been together part of. Uh, she's trusted us tremendously with what we do, uh, and not just us, but many, many young people around and social entrepreneurs, including the women around. Uh, her name is Shaida Saleem. Uh, she's very, very experienced, highly experienced and not the usual experience definition, not just the number of years, but actually the number of encounters of picking up challenges. Award winning, doesn't like it so, but uh, definitely deserves them and is a social entrepreneur. So not just an entrepreneur, but a social entrepreneur, something that will of course come up during the conversation. She's currently the team lead for Impact Network. Uh, which is doing fantastic work in five big domains that Pakistan needs the answers of. Uh, she's also headed uh, Ilm Ideas 2, which is a UK 8 program which has supported a whole lot of education innovation in Pakistan. Uh, and of course, just to summarize the massive profile, she's also the founder for three social enterprises uh, called Catco Kids, Sehat First and Dots Technologies. And Dots Technologies. Thank you very much for taking our time. What a pleasure it is to have you here. Thank you, man. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you. Uh, so, ye to profile definition, okay? But uh, we start with how do you define yourself in your own words? How do you uh, define yourself? Hmm. Uh, you know, that's an interesting question. Nobody's ever asked me that before. I think first and foremost, as a human, um, and that is an answer that whenever I give, people kind of raise an eyebrow and say, uh, "Okay, yes, but." But I think. At the end of the day, that one word is something we've lost sight of. Because that one word, human, encompasses empathy. It encompasses compassion. It encompasses our intelligence and ability to solve problems. It encompasses our ability to look ahead and envision and dream the future. Um, so what am I? I'm a human. And uh, while you while you say this, it's not just the soft part of being human, but also the hard part of being human, yes. the, the imagination and the discovery and to solve a lot of t uh, things together. So, so that's you, human. Would you pick any other word? Um, no, I think that's, that is really the word. So, what was it? It was a word that was not a person, not a person, not What's your everyday like? So, uh, when you make so much happen, uh, what's happening behind the scenes? What, what do you do every day from the time you get up to the time you hit bed? Um, what are the big chunks of the day? It's really interesting because I don't think I've ever had two days that were exactly the same. Um, it's a very fluid uh, kind of environment, but there are some pieces of it that I have to have every day. So, I wake up at four, every morning yes. and um, I need from four to six which is my time which I feel is actually the only time of the day I actually work. Four to six? Four to six a.m. Um, I'm alone, it's quiet and I get to think and that is when I do the real core thinking work how does how do the how does this piece fit in with this piece? How do these pieces fit together? Um, and if I don't do that, uh, the rest of my day is gone. So I I must do so that, that every that single is day. Essential four to six. That's your daily. That's work. that is essential. And any um, significance of the four a.m. rise? I've heard this from many people. Here. Um, I really don't know. Um, it's a natural habit. My eyes just open up at four. Um. It's my time to communicate with my maker. Uh, that's a really important piece. And I think it grounds us because we, we tend to get so caught up in the activities that we sometimes forget why we are doing the things we are doing. And that four to six time helps me focus and says, okay, why am I doing this? Is it actually important? 
you know, you hear people saying all the time, I'm so busy, I'm so busy, I'm so busy. And people say, ask me this question all the time. How do you do all of this? Yeah. And yet you're always kind of available. You're always, you know, relaxed. How, how are you managing this? And I say it's really simple because everything that people think is important is not. And think is it's not. And the things that we put to the side are actually the important pieces. The ones low on the priority. The ones that we think are low, but they're actually the ones that are the most important. Um, most people I know tend to put off long-term planning. Because they're so busy in today, right now, this has to get done. Um, I don't have time to think about what's going to happen a year from now. But if you don't have time to plan that out, then it's not going to happen. And so it's that four to six time where so that's, I do that's, that's one part, four to six. And I, I, I think the, it, it works for many people who wake up for namaz anyway. And, but, I've, but I've heard this that many, many successful people wake up at times that people are generally sleeping at. So either they are up late in the night or they are up early in the morning. But they do find that slot which helps them. Yeah, you, you need that slot. Yeah. Um, and I think the other thing um, that I have to do every day is connect really connect and I'm not talking about having meetings I'm not talking about having um, social time I'm not, not actually yeah not Facebook time I'm talking about one-on-one -on -one time with a person doesn't matter who the person is actually where I am able to connect on a human to human level and I will learn about that person or somehow contribute to that person's life. And that's a given you have to do it every day. Every single day. And could be anyone? Could be anyone. Anyone. Um, you must I've, have met many, many interesting people like us. Yes, it's amazing. Yeah. It's really, really incredible. Um, the best story of all that I heard during these types of encounters was the guy who sells chana near my house on the street. Mm -hmm. Um, he has a mobile wallet, SimSim barcode, and he accepts SimSim for the chana. You can buy 20 rupees worth of chana with a mobile phone now. Um, and I was intrigued. And I asked him, I said, now how does this happen? How, how does a chana wala get this mobile wallet SimSim thing and do you really think it's useful? And we had a very long discussion, almost uh, half an hour or so. And he was giving me his take of technology and why he felt that if we do not keep up with the times, he does not have hope for his children because we must keep up with the rest of the world. And this connection um, was a conversation that I have repeated very many times in many, very different forums. Um, because nobody would have thought to ask the guy selling chanas, the Revivala, um, his opinion on technology. That's true. But there he is. Yeah. Even though most would classify him as the uh, the biggest fortune, the bottom of the pyramid, and you know, take technology to them, yeah. but not involve them, not That's design right. things, the solutions around them. Yeah. Fascinating. So, what is success for you? Everybody's chasing success. Everybody's getting out of the bed. Doing, working really hard, somebody is showing up at events, pitching, uh, and at the end of the day, people are asking for success. Uh, but everybody's definition is different. Uh, you've done so much, but how have you defined success in all this time? So, um, have you heard of Emerson's poem on success? No, no, I haven't. Okay. But I'd love to hear it. Um, well, that's in my quote, so I can't read it to you. But basically, success is, in my opinion, the ability to touch lives, to change lives. Um, I think everything else is centered around that. And um, I had a very interesting assignment when I was in college. I had a professor who asked us to write our own obituary. And when you die, um, what would your life have been about? And so in essence, define your success early on. And I had three lines on that obituary. One was my children would think that they had the happiest childhood that any child would have. Two, 
every person I would ever come across would say, this woman touched my life in a positive manner, somehow, whatever little thing it was. But they would remember and there would be a real connection, a real touch. Some story. Some story. Um, and the third was that I would strive to excel in everything I did by competing with myself. To beat your own standards. To beat my own standards, to set my bar very high and to keep achieving higher and higher. Not competing with anybody else, but competing with myself. And those were really the three things and I think that would be the definition of success. What are the big beliefs that you have, um, Shahida, that should drive your life? Oh, definitely God. Mm. I, I believe that we have a Supreme Brain and um, that guides everything, uh, everything in my life, that's one. Um, I think the other one is this idea of learning um, and that as long as you're alive and as long as you are living, one should keep learning how to live. Uh. As long as you lie, you keep learning how to live. Yes. Make what sense of it. Yeah. Uh, um, yes. And I think, you know, that that's a constant work in progress. We keep working on ourselves continually. Um, I think we spend so much time externally, but not enough time internally. And so I like to think of myself um, as something that needs to be polished, constantly polished. So just keep working on myself. I think these are you two. Know, a lot of people I've come across in my workshops would generally uh, speak of the vulnerability, you know, in different ways. But it's, you know, to be like that, to be somebody who's learning all the time, to open yourself up and say that, hey, I'm not perfect, you know, sort of contrary to having that title, title of manager in the organization or being the partner in a relationship and wants to have a certain, um, how should I say? But we we all want to build that certain persona, and, and I think that stops many people from learning. How do you deal with that? I mean, for example, if I ask you that, hey, your profile has all experts and so many things that you've done, and yet you keep learning to put the two together, is doesn't work out for many people. Well, I think the reason you get to be I won't say an expert, but a recognized person in a certain area of work is because you are learning. Um, but that never stops because if you look around us, nothing is constant. Everything around us is constantly changing and therefore we must constantly change. The problem is that if things around you are changing and you are not changing, you get stuck. And we see that all around us and most of those people are pretty unhappy. So I think my learning is actually a selfish thing that I do. I'm doing it because I want to keep up with all the changes around me, that's one. And I want to keep growing to fulfill my own potential. Um, if we stop doing that, what happens is that all we are seeing is a reflection of ourselves, how other people view us. And that then identifies who we are. But we are not identifying ourselves. Um, I know that may sound very strange. Yeah, the, voice, the stronger voice has to be the one so coming from, from inside. A, a manager or my title doesn't define me. I define me. I could be a janitor. I would still be the same person. So those labels don't define me. Excellent. Like that. Believe in learning. Fantastic. Azadi is a Freedom means discipline. And this discipline may be like a lot. Uh, what, what are the disciplines you have taken yet that you will not ever compromise on? Uh, Work-wise, in your, in your contact, the work that you do, the organization that you've started or supported, what are those fundamentals that you've never let go?